Hi, everybody. It's Jeff Barton, and welcome to the Mortgage Minute. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. It's 2022, and here are some of the headlines. The interest rates have obviously gone up. Let's get to it. 30-year fixed rate is 3.70. These are averages across the U.S., so you can find cheaper ones and more expensive ones, but this is the average right in the middle. As I said, 30-year fixed rate loans, 3.7%. 15 years at 2.95, FHA is at 3.38, the Jumbo is at 3.33, that's taking a big jump, and uh, the 5-1 Arm is at 3.75. The 10-year has really taken a jump, and we're seeing yields on the 10-year go uh, 25 to 50 basis points over the past three months. 1.83 is the 10-year yield today, and uh, we expect it to continue to climb. There is demand on U.S. Um, debt, but not as to the point where uh, the fiscal stimulus that's been giving is going to uh, continue to keep that demand high. It isn't. Uh, so therefore, the Treasury yield has to rise in order to attract new borrowers, new buyers. Uh, there's a lot of risk in the marketplace right now, so there is some debate as to how the U.S. is handling it, Western Europe is handling it, certainly the developed countries. Countries like China are handling it quite a bit differently rather than tightening, they're actually loosening. Now, they're in a completely different um, situation than we are here in the U.S. They've got a real estate sector that is really in trouble, and they want to make sure that the growth rate is above a certain number, uh, currently at 4, 4.9%. And it usually, at least in the last 10 years, due to the real estate sector, has been really booming at over um, double-digit growth per year. So they've really um, they've decided to take the growth path rather than the inflation path. In the U.S. and in Western Europe, a lot of countries are looking at their inflation and saying that, hey, this is an issue for us, so we want to tamp down inflation, i.e. pullback stimulus. All of these things are experiments. The Chinese, the U.S., Europe all experimenting with what is happening. All capitalistic countries, regardless of whether they're a, a, um, a dictatorship, whether they're a, a shared um, leadership uh, structure, or whether they're a democracy, it is all being handled in the same way, i.e. it's a gamble. So nobody really knows what's happening in this uh, particular situation when it comes to inflation or this particular situation when it comes to growth. Okay, supply and labor. Today's, pr uh, yeah, today's problems, okay, I see. So uh, the, what I'm saying is um, the labor market is a tough market right now if you are a builder. Builders have been trying to build enough houses in the U.S. to be able to satisfy demand. Obviously, there's enough demand there to make money. So therefore, builders have been promptly and uh, really massively trying to build since really the recession started, not the recession, but the pandemic started, which is, uh, in, in some cases, a way to look at the economy in a recession, i.e. government spending, overspending, in order to keep us out of a, a deep recession or a depression. And that's what really we've been looking at. And now we're seeing that pullback. But regardless, the labor market is really tight. We're having a lot of people who just do not want to go to work or uh, are getting better deals other places. So therefore, building has suffered. And in places like Nevada and Arizona and Florida and uh, Michigan and Ohio and a couple other places where we really see a problem in housing in terms of not building enough, uh, those solutions are far away. Uh, the supply problem is obviously the same. Uh, we have either bottlenecks in the supply chain or that the lumber, for instance, is up to twelve, thirteen hundred dollars $1,300 per thousand cubic feet of lumber. Now that, and that may have no uh, uh, reference point to that, but during the height of last summer's uh, rise in lumber prices. It was sixteen hundred feet, sixteen hundred dollars a um, a thousand uh, board feet. So you can see that we're right kind of in the middle of where it was when we started the pandemic to where it is today, which is a little bit down from what its peaks were, but certainly it is high and it's going up. And you can say that about a lot of what's happening in the building industry. The the industry itself is suffering from a lack of supply of materials and a lack of demand, a lack of labor. And so those two things combined. Uh, to make housing still scarce. We're still way under inventory. Uh, yeah, okay. So the non-QM lending hiring. Okay, well, we've seen a couple of these um, uh, banks. Let me look at it. Yeah, right. Uh, Redfin buys Bay Equity, and they lay off 121. Wyndham Capital laid off 100 and something. Better.com laid off 900. Interfirst laid off a bunch. So those are the... Um, I buying companies. Now, today we see that a uh, couple of the lenders, the non-QM lenders, which we're hopefully going to see some business 
um, boom in that sector. Why I say that is because if conventional is going to cost more, it's better to um, uh, explore other avenues. Even though it might cost you more, you still are able to get a loan. Not only is it going to cost you more because rates go up in the conventional sense, but it's also going to cost you more because the money is going to be more scarce and it's going to be harder to get the loan. So these non-QM lenders, Angel Oak, Arca, Nufi, they're all hiring. There's 130 positions right there open and they're all salary positions. I'm Jeff Barton. I'm your voice in the mortgage industry. And this is the Mortgage Minute. We'll see you next time.